Top 10 Essential Tips for Beginner Minecraft YouTubers As a kid just trying to make my way in the competitive world of Minecraft YouTube, I find that I run into a lot of people that feel discouraged or don't know where to start. So if you've got aspirations of being the next Dream or Tommy in it, then you won't want to miss this video. up liking this video, consider subscribing. If you don't like subscribing, that's cool too. Instead, just leave a comment so that YouTube would recommend this video to more people. It really helps me out a lot as a creator, and it's less of a commitment than subscribing. And if you're thinking of becoming a Minecraft YouTuber so you can try and get into the Dream SMP, I have a great video you can watch about that right here. Alright, let's get started. Tip number one, have a consistent aesthetic and persona. This is something that's called branding, and you want to spend a lot of time on this, and I mean a lot of time on this. Now, not to pull back the curtain on my own channel, but I spent a lot of time brainstorming what I wanted my name to be, figuring out my aesthetic, my key color palette, I brainstormed what outfits I wanted my persona to have, I ran through lists upon lists of different variations on my username to figure out which one sounded better, which one's easier to say, easier to spell. Before I even posted my first video, like weeks before I even posted my first video, I made sure I had my channel banner and my profile picture done and figured out. And after I created my channel banner, I used that sort of glitchy pink galaxy image as the background in a bunch of my videos that would have a consistent background image across everything. Another thing you want to do when you're figuring out what you want your channel to be is you want to check your username on all social media sites. Like, you want to make sure that it's available as a Minecraft username, you know, make sure it's on Twitter, on Instagram, on Twitch even, on TikTok. You want to make sure that you can have the same username across all sites. And if you can't, but you're married to an idea, make sure you have a variation on your name that you can use that doesn't have, like, numbers or underscores, something like that. So, for example, Dream, when he can't use the username Dream, uses Dream was taken, instead of, like, Dream underscore zero one. Or, for me, when TV Rose is taken, I do Rose the TV. Now, it's important to remember that YouTube allows duplicate usernames, so search directly for channels with similar names. Don't just, like, type it in and say, oh, it's available. And you want to look for usernames that have similar names but aren't, spe like, specifically the same name because it will, you know, conflict with your search results, especially if that channel has a significant amount of subscribers. You don't want to be competing for traffic on YouTube search. Um, but if you do all of this work, it will make your channel super recognizable and it'll be unique. People will know who you are and they'll be able to distinguish you from the thousands of other Minecraft YouTubers that are out there. Alright, so tip number two is to have a recognizable and unique skin in Minecraft. And this kind of goes with number one. But think about all of your favorite Minecraft YouTubers. What comes to mind first? Their skin. Like, think Dream's green and white blob, or Tommy's like red shirt, or Green's red sweater, you know. You think about these iconic details, and very few of these YouTubers will change it over the course of their long careers. And if they do, they keep the most important elements, like they'll keep like the face, but they'll add a different clothing item or something like that, or a hat for Christmas or something like that. So you want your skin to be something that you can be happy with for a long time, like a really long time and something that is unique and matches your channel aesthetic that you figured out in step one, and is also pleasing to look at. Neon colors can work, but you want to be careful that you're not making a deviant art OC. <laughs> but 
how do you make a skin? I mean, you can always commission someone to do it. That's what I did at first. And then I realized I didn't like it, but it created a nice base for me to work off of. So it wasn't for nothing. And skin commissions are usually pretty cheap. So if you want to go that route, you can. Um, I just went on Fiverr. You could also look on Instagram, um, Etsy, probably someone there too. Um, or you can make one from scratch yourself using a skin editor. Um, or I have a really quick trick I use for making really unique detailed Minecraft skins right away. It takes like 15 minutes or less. Uh, but you'll have to subscribe and leave a comment if you want to see that video because that's a whole other topic and I don't really want to have to get into that in this video. But if you'd like to see it, let me know. Tip number three, don't waste your money on equipment right away. Expensive equipment does not make the YouTuber and this is something that goes for almost any profession, any skill, like if you're an artist. Copic markers do not make you a better artist. You do not need a thousand dollar PC. You do not need a two hundred dollar microphone. You do not need a three hundred dollar camera. I literally do everything that I do from a laptop with a blue snowball. I'm serious. Listen, there are only two things that you need to worry about as far as equipment goes when you're starting your channel. You need a recording software and you need a mic. No, the most commonly used recording software is completely free. It's called OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. It's completely free to download and it may be a little intimidating at first, but it's really simple to set up like if you have a tutorial handy. Um, and I can make a tutorial for setting up specifically for recording Minecraft if you guys want to. Again, leave a comment if you'd like to see that. But again, really simple, really easy to use, and it's really versatile. Again, you can also use it for streaming, and it's free. So you don't need to worry about paying for like Bandicam or something like that. Like Bandicam kind of sucks anyways. <laughs> Um, the one piece of equipment that you do want to spend a bit of money on is a good mic. And I cannot stress this enough. Bad audio will turn people away immediately. Think about the reason why you last clicked off of a video immediately. Was it because of the audio? Because I bet 9 times out of 10 it was. It also really disturbs people with sensory or auditory issues and it makes captions really hard to make and understand. Me, myself, as someone with ADHD, dealing with bad audio is like bad texture, you know, just can't touch it and like it really rubs my brain the wrong way to listen to like grainy or like clicky kind of audio and I cannot stress that enough that that is something you need to be able to work on. Get a mic that is any decent quality, like I said, I use a blue snowball. Um, you could even splurge on a Yeti right away if you wanted to. Um, also getting a pop filter is worth looking into because that can really help your audio just take it to the next level. I don't think you can really get good pop filters for blue snowball, I looked for them. It's mostly just like put a sock over the microphone and it doesn't make it sound very good. Trust me, I've tried. I wanna talk a little bit about face cams. You don't need a face cam right away. You don't even need one at all if you don't want to. Like, the rise of VTubers and YouTubers like Ryan Boot and Dream is perfect proof of this. You do not need your face to be successful. If you want to use your face, that is all good for you and you know, looking for the right camera that you want to use, that is another avenue that you could take to research. But I just want you to understand that if you're not comfortable using your face or you don't want to worry about using your face, you do not have to. But if you want to do it eventually or you feel more confident doing it later, a face reveal can be a fun incentive for your subscribers to reach towards and talk about and theorize about. Now, just look how much hype and buzz that Rainbow is able to create with just a photo of his eyes. Tip number four is to keep your editing simple and easy. So when you first start out, 
making YouTube videos. You likely won't have the skills nor the time for complex or fancy video editing. You want to keep it as simple as possible. Make videos that aren't very long, something like 20 minutes max. Really, you don't need to go longer than that, and if you are, you probably need to go back again and cut some more things out because you're either rambling on or you're being really awkward and stalling it out for longer than you need to. And keeping your editing simple can also really help avoid burnout because editing will seem like way less of a tedious process if it's easier for you to do. Trust me, editing is the hardest part of being a YouTuber. It kind of sucks. There is kind of no way to make it fun, but you gotta get through it. So if you make it something that's easy to do, you can at least get through it a lot quicker than normal. And don't worry about inserting like a bunch of memes or funny sound effects or camera angles and stuff. As much as that stuff is entertaining, it's not necessary right away in your first few videos. And there are better ways to infuse humor and personality into your videos with like simple cuts and zooms without having to resort to mainstream memes. This can also kind of date your content a lot, so you want to be careful with that. If you're going to overuse a meme, make sure it's something that like doesn't get cringy. I have seen some YouTube videos you would not believe. Especially like vloggers. Vloggers seem to really love like outdated memes and it's not cute. Like they themselves might be really funny, but then they just add in like a bunch of weird cuts and memes, especially with, like RuPaul's Drag Race. I don't get that, but <laughs> I really don't get that. But it's just something to keep in mind. You are way funnier than you think you are. And as far as editing software goes, I don't really have a good recommendation for beginners. However, I personally use Corel Video Studio. You probably haven't really heard a lot about it. It's got a lot of good features. It's pretty easy to work with. Um, the lag isn't that bad once I figured out how to make the settings right. Um, it's kind of expensive, but it goes on sale really often and you don't have to worry about any sort of monthly fees. <laughs> Adobe. You can also consider editing on your phone. Like if you're just making Minecraft shorts or any kind of YouTube shorts, there are a bunch of phone editing apps that cost way less than computer editing apps. Tip number five is make good thumbnails. Thumbnails are the first things you really will see, not the titles. As much as we love to have fun with our titles that I make videos a thousand percent funnier, the thumbnail is what you see first. You need it to effectively communicate to the viewer what the video is about or draw them in in some way. You want to keep text big, bold, and readable. Simple, aerial font, minimal words. Don't put a whole paragraph of text or like five little different words like scattered across the scene. You know, maybe just a few keywords like building hacks or bed wars tutorial, you know, something like that. Also, keep text to the left side of the thumbnail. This is a trick I learned so that the text doesn't get covered up by the video length or the watch later button and it stays visible no matter what. This is something to really keep in mind and you wouldn't think it has a bit of big effect, but it does, I promise. So keep your graphics simple. I use just like some anime action lines and like some arrows every once in a while or like Minecraft skin PNGs that you can get from namemc.com. Honestly, really simple stuff. And then of course I draw all the pictures of my character, but if you're not artistic, don't worry about doing something like that. There are tons of other free resources out there that you can use otherwise. Again, NameMC is really good if you want pictures of Minecraft YouTuber skins to put in your thumbnails. YouTube, like as the algorithm, looks for faces in thumbnails. So if you can include your face or a character's face as the primary visual, um, and remember, the best thumbnails don't need text at all. Like think Dream's Manhunt thumbnails. Like it's literally just dream in a box underground and the hunter is like staring down at him. There's no text there, no explanation, and like you immediately are drawn in and you immediately know at least a little bit what the video is going to be about. Tip number six, 
don't try to be someone you're not. Now, as much as we all love our favorite content creators, directly imitating them will never work because it's never truly going to be you and what works for them might not necessarily work for you. You'll burn yourself out easily and you won't be having fun doing it. Be true to yourself and be creative with your ideas. Now, say you wanna do a manhunt video. Don't copy Dream's manhunts, you know, explicitly. Like, try something different. Like, maybe it's modded. Maybe you include, like, your favorite mod in the manhunt. Or maybe it's, like, a manhunt, but it's also a death swap or something like that. Do have fun with it, you know? Um, I've also seen an influx of Ranboo clones recently, and especially on TikTok. And this is something that I talk a little bit more about in this video. Check it out up there. Um, and while they are charming, much like the man himself, the same format every time really brings nothing to the table and people can't already get from more established content creators. So really be careful of that, especially if you want to go for like a quirky IRL persona, you know, especially if you also want to do like the mask and glasses. As much as it is a fun concept for getting your face in there without showing your face, you want to be careful of like how you present it and try to be unique with it um, so you're not just being a Ranbu recolor OC. I think that's the best way to put it. Tip number seven is cross-platform promotion. Use other social media sites to promote your YouTube channel. This is basically the new meta on YouTube. You need to pick at least two other social media sites to post on and keep that content relevant to what you make on YouTube and use it to promote your YouTube. So, for example, stream on Twitch and use your Twitch videos to um, edit into videos or put video clips of your videos on TikTok. Uh, post photos of yourself on Instagram or photos of your Minecraft builds on Instagram. Make memes on Twitter or Reddit or like interact with other famous content creators or anything else you can think of. Plus, you might find it easier to gain a following on one of these other sites instead of YouTube. And you may find you want to shift your content entirely to that platform. Maybe YouTube isn't working out, but you start doing Twitch and you find you like the long form content better. And so you switch your focus entirely to being a Twitch streamer. While you've already had that setup of creating your branding and finding your niche. And that brings me to tip number eight, find your niche. So try out different types of videos to see what sticks. And your niche is, it's videos that people will keep coming back to you for that there is a high demand for, but maybe not a high supply, like supply and demand, right? We learned this in school. So to do this, you know, try out different things. Make all different kinds of content. You will notice that in my early videos, I talked about trying different kinds of videos to see what sticks, and I did. You know, I watched, you know, what videos did well, which ones didn't, and then I tried to do more of those kinds of videos. And I'm still kind of doing that. I'm still trying to figure out what sticks. You may be figuring this out for a long time. Some YouTubers are still figuring this out and they've got a million subscribers. So, you know, don't be afraid to experiment and don't be afraid to fail. Some videos will flop. It's not the end of the world. You know, you have to move on, try something else. Everybody has bad days and it's not going to ruin your YouTube career for the rest of your life. Just keep trying. And once you find your niche, stick to it. Tip number nine is to be informative before entertaining. So this might seem counterintuitive, but just listen. For your first few videos, you can't just do Let's Plays or Bed Wars videos. While you might have fun doing them, you won't get those out into the algorithm. You have to start with informative content. Talk about the new snapshot, give a tutorial, answer a question. Some of the best early YouTube advice I came across while researching for this channel is make your title a question that your viewers need answered, and then answer that question with your video. For example, instead of just playing Bed Wars, do 
how to play Bed Wars, written out just like how someone might type it in the search bar. That's another big key. Type your titles as though it's something somebody else might type, and you'll come up in YouTube search more often. So then that video of itself would be a step-by-step -step guide on how to play Bed Wars. And now that's not to say you shouldn't have fun with the video. You should. You should infuse your personal flavor into the video to give people a taste of you and what you're like. Remember, people watch your content for you and what you can bring to the table, not for the game you play, necessarily. Now, maybe you have a silly catchphrase, a favorite mob, a weird voice you do when you see a cute little parrot. Oh, look at him! That's the sort of flavor that you need to bring to these videos so that people get a taste of who you are. And that way, when you do start doing entertaining content that's just you messing around and doing what you want to do, people are already invested in who you are and they don't care what kind of content you'd make as long as it's still you. So tip number 10 is to have fun and don't get burnt out. If you're not having fun, then why are you doing it? Don't force yourself to do something if you're not happy with it. Even if it's after you've already built up like a huge following on YouTube, it's okay to admit it. It's okay to admit it if you realize you don't like doing YouTube. It's okay to give up. That's kind of what I did with my old channel. I scrapped it all and moved on to this because I realized it wasn't fun and it wasn't what I really wanted to do on YouTube. So even if a specific video does well and you think you might have found your niche with it, if you don't like that specific video and you don't like making that kind of content, you don't have to do more like it. Just because it does well doesn't mean you have to stick to it. Just keep moving on so you find something that both you and your audience enjoys. A lot of YouTube advice channels will say you have to post twice a week or you won't grow. Well, I'm here to say that that's bullshit. Like, you can't force yourself to work that much if you're not able to. If you can, if you have that work ethic to make at least two videos a week and be consistent every single week, you know, you go girl, you do that. But for everyone else, just make videos as often as you can. Consistency of quality is way, way more valuable than consistency of schedule. YouTube can be a grind, yes but it doesn't have to be. If there's any other question you have about getting started with Minecraft YouTube, let me know. I'll be happy to answer or direct you to someone who can answer your question. If you want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, my Instagram is at rosethetv. DM me and we can chat. Otherwise, I wish you the best of luck on your Minecraft YouTube journey. See you in the Bed Wars lobby.